Ahoy, mates! It is good to be with you once again here on Facebook and YouTube as we get ready once more to dive in to the Word of God. I'm Captain Nathan. I hope you've had a great week this week. I know I have. My family and I were able to get out for a bit and to have some uh, shore leave, as it were, and to get able uh, and to be able to relax a little bit. I hope you've had some fun this week. I hope you've been able to enjoy your time and to have fun with your family, with some friends as well this week, and I hope you are doing well here today. Well, as we get started here, as we normally do, let's start with our theme song of Let the Word of Christ Dwell in You Richly in All Wisdom. I hope this song has been a help to you. I hope it's been stuck in your head through the week. I know it's been in mine a little bit. And you know what we could all do with having a little bit more of the Word of God being stuck in our heads uh, through the week. And that's the whole point of why I have wanted this song to be a part of our uh, videos here, is to be able to help the Word of Christ, the Bible, to be such a part of our lives that it just can't help but come out. And so if this song has been stuck in your head through the week, I consider my job to be accomplished. And so let's start off singing a little bit here. And remember, we're singing with our hearts to the Lord. And so I don't care if you can carry a tune or not. If you know it, if you've learned it, sing it out as best as you can wherever you are. And let's sing a little bit as we get started with Let the Word of Christ. Again, I've got my squeeze box. Whoa, that was bad. Let's try that again. There we go. Got my squeeze box ready to go here. And let's sing. Uh, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Here we go. Are you ready, boys and girls? I hope you're ready. Let's get a deep breath so we can sing well and sing out. The squeeze box needs a deep breath as well. And so here we go. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs. great fun for me to learn it on my concertina here. I hope you've had a great time learning it and learning to sing it as well. I got Perry here with me this week. I made sure I remembered him before we got started. So he's here to join us for our video this week. And I hope you're ready to dive into the Word of God here today. But before we get to that, there is a very important thing that we started last week that I want to keep going again this week, and that is our little section on how to talk like a sailor. Because we started this last week, if you remember, and we went over a lot of the names for the different things and the different parts of a ship, whether that be from the keel to the deck to the rigging to the mast, bow and stern, and other things besides that. We got the names of some of those parts uh, down for us uh, last week, but this week we are going to start looking at some of the directions on a ship. When it comes to navigating a ship and getting around a ship, when it comes to giving directions, when someone gives directions for getting around and getting to those places, if you want to get directions to the forecastle, if you want to get directions to the galley or to the helm or to the hold, if you want to get those directions, uh, there are certain ways that they will be given to you. All right? Because you don't have right and left, up and down in the usual way on a ship, you have special names for them just like you do for the names of things on a ship. So let's get ready to dive into this and learn to talk like a sailor today. First of all, we're going to start right here in the center of the top deck, all right? This position right here in the center of the top deck, can any of you guess what that position might be called? It's not center ship, all right? That might be a good guess. It is amidships, all right? Amid is an old fancy way of saying in the middle or in the center of something. And so uh, amidships is just saying that it, that is at the middle of the ship. 
And for us on our ship, that was usually where we would hold crew or watch meetings. If your watch, your set of people to where you to were on a ship, you would be organized into watches of four hours to where you were either 12 to four, four to eight, or eight to 12. And um, if your watch needed to have a meeting where your watch leader, your officer, your mate would say, all right, we're gonna organize and say, who's on schedule for which position during our next watch? Uh, if you needed to have a watch meeting or if you needed to have a crew meeting, usually we would have it at amidships and there would be a call to go out all extra hands to amidships or there would be a call to go out and say, hey, the four watch to the, main, to the amidships or the mizzen watch to the midships. And you would meet up there at the middle of the ship because primarily, usually, there's not a lot going on there. You have the helm in the back or on the stern of the, towards the stern of the ship. You had the helm back here. You had the galley up here and the lookout and you had stuff going on usually on the uh, rear and on the front of the ship. But in the middle, there was usually more space and there wasn't as much going on to where there was space to have those meetings. But let's just say you are standing there, all right? I'm gonna orient my model, I'm gonna turn my model so it's like you are standing there a little bit here. And so if you're sitting, if you are standing here at amidships, looking towards the front of the ship, towards the bow, that direction would be called the fore, all right? To head up to the fore, or another, or another way to say it would be to head forearm, all right? Sailors had a way of shortening words and getting rid of extra letters to where they didn't really say four word, they would say forearm, all right? Forearm, head forearm and help pay out the chain for the anchor drop tonight, all right? Or head to the fore and check with the lookouts about what's up ahead of us here. So you're towards the front, towards the bow, you have the fore or the forearm, just like we talked about with the four mast last week or the four castle. All right, both of those parts, both of those areas are in the front of the ship. That term is used to describe anything towards the front, the fore. Uh, and then going towards the back of the ship, heading towards the stern, like we learned last week, you have the aft part of the ship, heading aft. If you were heading, if you were looking going this way, you would be heading fore. If you're going that direction, towards the helm, towards the stern, you would be heading aft on a ship. That's the term, the after part of a ship. And so you have front is four, back is aft. And then when if you're looking right and left, you don't have just right and left anymore. Again, from your perspective, looking here towards the fore, towards the bow of the ship, if you're looking in this direction towards me, towards the bow, your left side here would be called port and your right side over here is called starboard. All right, so port and starboard. If you ever watch a really old movie or a read a really old book, you might hear the left side referred to as larboard instead of port. Uh, but I believe there was just a, there was, that created more confusion because larboard and starboard sounded too much alike to where it caused problems, it caused accidents to happen. And so over time that changed happened to where instead of calling it larboard, they changed it to port. But so remember, your left side is port and your right side is starboard, all right? And so, uh, so for example, this would be your port rigging, this would be your starboard rigging. Everything is always named in relation to where it is on the ship, all right? So any of the, so the four sails, the four masts, uh, the one exception, I guess you could say to that is that this is not called the aft mast, it is called the mizzen mast. All right, and why that is, why that change was made, I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to go and check it out. But for the most part, you have aft and fore, port and starboard. Now, what other directions are there that you can go on a ship? If you're looking at that ship, and so we got right and left, front and back, but what other directions do you think that there could be on this ship? There are two in particular. One of them is up. If you were to go up into the rigging, that term would be to go aloft. You might hear the command going out saying, all, all climbers head aloft to the foresails. All right, that's the saying. That's the, that means to go up into the rigging on the foremast to get ready to set these four sails. 
all right? And that doesn't mean the number for sales, that just means the for sales on the four max. All right, they may specify and say, these are the sales that we want to set after that, but that, that command is saying to head aloft, to go up into the rigging, that's what that means. And then you have another direction of going down. If you were to go down into the hold or into the forecastle or even lower down into the bilge or officer's quarters or any of those other areas, to go down below the decks. Are you ready for this, boys and girls? This is tough, all right? This was a hard one. It's really, really not what you would expect from a ship because I mean, you got lots of weird thing, weird names for things. I mean, you're heading aft for going back, you have port and starboard, all of these weird terms. What could they possibly think of for going down under the deck? I'll tell you what, boys and girls, here it is. To go down under the deck means to go below. Now, look, I, I, I got to tease a little bit, but that is the, it's actually kind of the easiest one to remember. To go below is what it is to go under the deck. If you were to head down to the hold or down to the forecastle, they would say to head below and get some sleep. And get, head below, get some sleep. Head below, get some uh, sail supplies from the hold or head below and check with, the, check with someone about something else, right? And so that was down, to go down is to head below all right so let's review very quickly as much as we can here as much as to where let's review today with our directions so let's orient our ship here to the front is four to the back is aft to the left is port to the right is starboard to head up into the rigging is to head aloft and to head down below is to head below all right any questions about that any thoughts I hope you do have some questions and some thoughts about them because I want to hear them. And I have an email address that I've set up specifically for these videos and it's right here and it says AskCaptainNathan at FaithBaptistYuma.com. If you have any questions about any of the terms that I've gone over, any of the lessons that we've had, any of the songs that we've sung, if you have questions or suggestions. Uh, I want you to ask them and I want you to send them to this email, AskCaptainNathan at FaithBaptistYuma.com and I would be happy to hear from you. It would be super exciting to hear from you this week. And so if you have those questions, if you have those suggestions, please send them to me and I want to, be, I want to hear from you this week. All right, boys and girls, we're going to get ready to dive into the Word of God now. And so I hope you've got your Bibles out and I hope you've got them ready to turn with me. And we are going to be in the book of 2 Timothy here today. The book of 2 Timothy here in the Word of God. Again, it's in the New Testament. If you have a Bible there, I'd like it if you took it out and turned there with me. I'll have the verses on the screen here in a minute for those who don't have a Bible, but if you have one, it's good practice to make sure you're practicing navigating your Bible. And so let's go to the book of 2 Timothy. Again, if you're looking at the New Testament, you can see it's close to the end, not as far as we were yesterday, uh, but there's a cluster of books there, kind of in the middle of the New Testament, where there's a bunch of T's, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, and Titus, and that's right before you get to Hebrews. And so if you're in that first cluster with Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, you need to go a little bit further until you get into those T's of Thessalonians, and we're in 2 Timothy chapter number 1. And so if you have it there, look with me as I read. And so just for context's sake, I'm going to start reading in verse 1, but we're going to be focusing in on verse number 5 here in just a moment. Here. But just for context's sake, let's read from verse number 1. Follow along as I read. The Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, 
and I am persuaded that in thee also. We're going to be focusing on verse number 5 there as Paul says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, that was first in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice. You see, boys and girls, today is a very special day. It is not just any other Sunday. Sundays are always special, right? Sundays are always supposed to be special. That's normally when we go to church. It's what we call the Lord's Day because Jesus Christ rose from the dead on a Sunday. And so now we worship on Sundays to celebrate and to remember that fact that Jesus rose from the dead. And we celebrate that by going to church and gathering and worshiping. And I know it's been a little bit different recently, but Sundays are always special where we get to go to church and learn about God to worship with other believers and other boys and girls. And so Sundays have always been special, but this Sunday is also special because it's even more special that there's a something else that happens today because it is called Mother's Day. Today is Mother's Day. It is a special Sunday that is set aside for us to show honor and to show respect and to show just to, to spoil our moms, so to speak, a little bit. To show that honor and to show that respect for what moms do for us each and every day. All right, so boys and girls, with it being Mother's Day today, I want you to meet someone very special, and I want you to meet my mom. All right, this is my mom. Her name is Anne, and she is the one that was, uh, she is the mother that was responsible for raising me throughout my life. And yes, I had a dad. And so it wasn't like it was just my mom doing it alone, uh, but my mom was largely responsible for raising me. My dad worked a lot, and so my mom was largely responsible uh, for a lot of that. And boys and girls, I want you to understand something to where my mom is someone who was very special. And when I met and when I referenced uh, working on the ship, while it started out first as something with me and my dad, uh, my mom eventually did join in as well with working on the ship. And so it became a family thing for us to be able to do as a family with my mom and my dad to go down on a Saturday for a work day to go and help with the painting or uh, resurfacing or any or, or any other that was constantly going on to help maintain and keep that ship afloat. And boys and girls, my mom was very special because, I mean, she did a lot for me. She invested a lot of ways when it came to uh, my learning music, whether it be piano or learning the trumpet or whether it be with my school and my, I, I, did, I played a lot of sports and my mom would always try to take that extra mile to be there as often as she could uh, to be there at my sports, whether it was soccer or basketball uh, when I got into junior and high school. And boys and girls, my mom was is someone who was very, very special to me. And boys and girls, a lot of times we have this idea in our minds, especially for boys, to where it's almost an insult to call someone a mama's boy. Right? We, we, we hear that, oh, well, you're just a mama's boy, right? And, and we think of that almost as an insult. But boys and girls, I want you to understand something is that God places great importance and he places great value on what a mother does. He places great value on that. And he, to where uh, when you look at the book of Proverbs, there is a lot to be said, especially in Proverbs 31, when it speaks of the virtuous woman. It says, her children rise up and call her blessed. And there are many mothers throughout the scripture that are held up and shown to us in high regard, in great esteem to where the Bible says, see, here's a woman who gave birth. I mean, that holds up Mary as the mother of Christ. You see the story of Hannah as she gave birth to Samuel, her first son in the book of uh, 1 Samuel. You see Many others as well. You see Elizabeth as she gives birth in her old age to a son, John the Baptist, who would become John the Baptist. You have uh, Sarah in her old age giving birth 
to Isaac. You have, I mean, the Bible over and over again holds these mothers up and puts them up and says, see, here is someone who raised her children. Here is a mother who, were they perfect? No, not, no, not by the long shot. Many of them made very difficult and very big mistakes uh, in their lives, but nonetheless, even still, the Bible still puts great value on a mother and what they do. And you know what, boys and girls, I know that uh, with the way the world is and the way things are, I know there may be some of you that are listening to me today who have a mother that is different than the person who gave birth to you. All right, you may have a stepmom, you may be adopted, or there, there may be any number of different situations out there. Find yourself in a position where you are living with someone who is not the woman who gave birth to you, but they are responsible for you. And boys and girls, I want you to understand that that is what defines a mother. That is what makes a mother. They are the woman who takes responsibility for you. Even if they're not the one who gave birth to you, even if, if whatever, other, whatever other excuse you may come up with to say that this person isn't your real mom, boys and girls, if they have taken responsibility for you, they are your mother. They have become your parent. That is what defines, that is what makes the parent-child relationship is that your parents are responsible for you. They are responsible to teach you how to be an adult. They are responsible for teaching you how to live your life. They are responsible for providing for you. They are responsible for keeping you safe, for taking care of you. And boys and girls, I want you to understand something that if you find yourself in a little bit of a different home situation, you don't have to be weird about Mother's Day. This doesn't have to be a weird day for you. If you have someone who has taken responsibility for you, if you have a woman in your life who has decided to take that responsibility in teaching you, taking that responsibility in providing for you, taking that responsibility in taking care of you, you have a mother. You have someone who is taking care of you. And as we read just a moment ago, Paul here rejoices in the fact that Timothy is a man who has received the unfeigned faith, the good news of the gospel, that it's not pretend, it's not just because it was his parents, it's not just because his mom believed that he believed, but he still learned it from his mother and from his grandmother. He learned the good news of the gospel. He learned what it meant to walk with God and to have that relationship and to be a Christian and to be a believer. He learned that from his mother and from his grandmother. That relationship between you and your mom, boys and girls, is extremely important. And boys and girls, when we get to Father's Day, don't worry, dads, it'll be your turn here in just a few weeks. Don't worry, I'm looking forward to that as well. But for just for today on Mother's Day, we want to focus in on the fact that boys and girls, your mother, whether they gave birth to you or not, they have taken responsibility for you and for teaching you what it means to live and in many cases what it means to believe in God, to believe in Christ and what that looks like and what that means. And boys and girls, I don't want you to ever to get to a place where you think that it's okay to, 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 to not care about what your mom says. I don't want you to ever get to a place where you make light of your mother, where you make fun of your mother, where you put your mom down, all right? That is not okay. That is not what the Bible says. The Bible says that the eye that mocketh at his father and that despiseth to obey his mother, the eagles of the valley shall pluck it out. I mean, that's pretty graphic. That's kind of, ee, kind of a little bit weird at first to think about, but God has very strong words when it comes to the parent and child relationship. When it comes to children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. It doesn't say children obey your parents if they deserve it. It doesn't say children obey your parents if you want to or if you like to. It says children obey your parents in the Lord. 
The only reason that you or I might have to disobey our parents is for if it is directly against what the Bible says. If your parents were to say, hey, I want you to go rob a bank, okay, you might have a reason there to be able to say, mom or dad, I can't do that. I can't go rob a bank. The Bible says thou shalt not steal. I can't do that. That's against what the Bible says. But even in those moments, boys and girls, there is a second part of that verse that says, honor father and mother. Honor thy father and mother, that it may be well with thee. Boys and girls, even though obedience is in the Lord to where it goes up until if they try to tell us to do something that is against the word of God, you know what? There is a limit to that obedience when it comes to God's word. But when it comes to that honor, that respect, that right attitude, that giving of value, that placing of weight on them and their opinions, there's no qualification on that. That even if, even if I'm in a position where I have to disagree and I have to say, Mom, Dad, I can't do that, that command to honor them, to respect them, still applies. And boys and girls, I want you to understand that today, on Mother's Day, today is a day where you have an opportunity to show special honor, where you get to show a special respect to your mom today. And I hope that you'll do that. I hope that you'll find a way to, show, to do something special for your mom. I know usually, I know in our family, uh, it was always, I would take mom out to eat. We would take mom out to eat to her favorite restaurant. She loved Texas Roadhouse, and I know she still does as well. But uh, that was our tradition, was going out to eat. And you know what, right now, that may not be the best option right now uh, with the way things are. But I'm sure that there are plenty of other things that you can find to do special for your mom, even if it's just doing the housework for her, or whether it's, I don't know, working with your dad to have him help you make a special meal for mom, or to do something for her. I want you to take, take that effort to show a special honor to your mom, because as the Bible shows us here, this young man, Timothy, he had a special impact that was made on his life, not by his father, but by his mother and by his grandmother. And you know what? We place great emphasis on fathers. We should, and we will when it comes to Father's Day and our lesson here. But boys and girls, let us not forget that mothers are important as well. And they play a role in teaching you what is right and what is wrong. And they play a role in teaching you and in equipping you and in helping you to be who you're supposed to be for God's honor and for God's glory. Now, as we get ready to close out the day, I want to take a, take a moment to pray and to ask God to bless us as we head out for our day this week. Father, I thank you so much for today. I thank you so much for your word and for the challenge that it brings to us as we see this example of Timothy and how he learned how to be a Christian and how to be a believer, not uh, from his mother and from his grandmother. And that we see that legacy, we see that heritage that was passed down from grandmother to mother to son. And Lord, I ask that you would help each of us this week and today to, to take that time to show honor, to show love and respect to our moms. Uh, I know, again, there are boys and girls out there that may be in a little bit of a different situation. But God, I ask that you would help them as well to show that honor, to show that love and to show that uh, respect as well. May we learn from our moms. May we not put them down. May we not treat them lightly. May we not rebel or be nasty to them. But Lord, may you help us to show that honor and respect that your word commands us to show. Lord, I ask that you would be with us as we go, that you would help us to honor and to glorify you in all that we say and do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. All right, boys and girls, I hope you've had a great time with us here today as we dove in uh, to the Word of God. I hope you I hope you were paying attention at that part about learning to talk like a sailor. We'll get that contest going here soon, so make sure you're paying attention and watching our videos to stay tuned for that update. 
Again, if you want to send a question or have a comment or a suggestion for next week's video, make sure you send it right here to Ask Captain Nathan at FaithBaptistNuma.com. If you have that question, if you have that suggestion, make sure you talk to your mom and dad and they'll help you send that email off. Uh, and uh, I would look forward to hearing from you there. I hope you have a great Mother's Day, that you show that special love, that affection, and that respect for your mom today. Find a way. Conspire with your dad. Conspire with your brothers and sisters. Find a way to do something special for mom today, and I know that she will appreciate it, all right? And so, with that being said, I hope you have a great week. Stay happy, have a great day, and we'll see you again next week. Oh, one last announcement is that I do enjoy dropping our videos on Sundays. It seems like most more of you are listening and watching on Sundays and on Fridays. And so going forward, until we really start having our kids um, ministries again here at Faith Baptist Church, we are going to be dropping our videos on Sundays at 9 o'clock, all right? Once church gets started back to normal, so to speak, uh, we may go back to the uh, go back to our Friday videos. Uh, but for right now, for the way things are, more people seem to see the videos and to be able to notice them when they drop on Sundays. So just be aware of that going forward. Sundays at 9 o'clock. I'll see you next week. Have a great week.